The year is 1990. David Hasselhoff has broken down the Berlin Wall with the mere force of his voice and chest hair, and a new type of vehicle is taking the automotive world by storm. And I'm not talking about your mom's Miata, or MX-5 as it's called over here in Europe. No, I'm talking about the SUV, the sport utility vehicle. Starting with Toyota 60 series Land Cruiser, which you can learn more about in this video on our channel, in 1980, Jeep's Cherokee XJ in 83 and the Land Rover Discovery in 89, car makers are starting to make a killing, stuffing super capable trucks with comfort and luxury features and marketing them to people who simply like what driving a super buff looking and super capable truck says about their personality. Which brings us back to the Mercedes G-Wagon, arguably the most buff looking and capable of them all, and part two of this four part series covering the history of the Geländewagen. Fun little side note, when we were shopping for G-Wagons in Norway, we did so on a Norwegian only site and used Google Translate to navigate the site in English. Now, Norwegians actually know the G-Wagon by its German name, Geländewagen, but some folks listing theirs on this site misspelled the word as Geländewagen. And throwing in this little R changes the meaning from the German word Gelände, meaning terrain, to Gelände, meaning handrail. So Google Translate showed us a bunch of listings for railing cars, and we took quite a while to figure out why. Anyway, back to the story. Now, Mercedes knew that their G-Wagon was plenty capable and that people were digging its boxy shape. But they realized that to compete in this new market of the SUV, the G was going to need modern engines, a more plushy interior, and up-to-date electronics, aka a pretty significant overhaul. Now, all these things were available in other Mercedes models at the time, so adding them to the G wasn't going to be a problem. But what about that base of customers, including various armed forces, that had come to like the G in the past 11 years? For its simplicity, for its ease of maintenance and repair, and for its simple and rugged capability. I mean, the German Bundeswehr had already shunned the W460 G-Wagon because it was seen as too expensive of an upgrade. Throwing in leather upholstery, a DVD surround stereo system, and fancy chrome trim was unlikely to change their minds. Were customers like that simply going to have to buy a Lada in the future? No, decided Daimler-Benz and went instead for the same strategy that Toyota had successfully executed with the Land Cruiser line 10 years earlier. They were going to split the G-Wagon lineup into a rugged, basic workhouse G that would please military and other government customers, and a luxurious Kardashian G that would capture a share in the emerging SUV market. Now, the workhorse G started selling in 1992 as the W461. And to be honest, was in essence the W460 we've covered in part one, with a new model code and two less engine options. The M102 that had been introduced in 82, and the more popular OM602 that had been introduced in 87. A long wheelbase soft top was added for military customers, as well as a really rad looking pickup truck shaped for the civilian user. To reinforce the split of the model range, Daimler marketed this vehicle exclusively to military customers, governments, public authorities and NGOs, and delivered it standard with a 24 volt electrical system that is customary to other military vehicles. No chance for the ordinary Joe, like us, to walk into a dealership and buy a new W461. With a few exceptions that we will look at in a minute, this is still the case today. Seriously, try searching the Mercedes-Benz website for the W461. You won't find it anywhere, except in the archives. No specs of the current models, no prices, nothing. Trust me, I've tried. This is why all the models we are going to talk about from now on have become very desirable amongst off-road and overland enthusiasts like us and command incredibly high prices, even for G-Wagons. In September of 1997, the 290 GD that had stood unchanged for six years became the 290 GD turbo diesel, with the addition of, you guessed it, turbocharging. The new engine was still an OM602 inline-5, but with reinforced valves, head, pistons 
and a single stage turbo, bumping the power output up by 25 horsepower. Wow! While reducing fuel consumption. If you recall from our previous video, the letters OM stands for oil motor and indicate a diesel engine. Now get this. The letter A after the three digit number combination stands for aufgeladen, the German word for turbocharged. And the letter L stands for Ladeluftkühlung, which is a very descriptive German word for charged air cooling or intercooling. So this new engine package labeled OM602LA came battle tested from the E-Class sedan with a minor adjustment of Mercedes opting for a smaller water, water, water intercooler, smaller water intercooler, a smaller water intercooler that would fit behind the existing grill assembly and would not negatively impact the G's approach angle. The Daimler engineers also gave the 29GD turbo diesel a small air inlet on the passenger side front fender for the turbo to breathe through. That makes these turbo diesel models easy to spot. The decision to split the model line and offer a space back utilitarian G model, space back. <laughs> a base back utilitarian G model started to pay off in the mid 90s, especially with military customers with more and more armed forces around the world, including the German Bundeswehr this time, adding some G wagons to their lineup, and the 290GD in 1999 famously becoming the official light infantry vehicle of the NATO peacekeeping forces of Operation Joint Guardian in Kosovo. With the option to run the OM602 on pretty much anything flammable, including the lower and contaminated grades of diesel found in conflict zones, most customers throughout the 90s opted for the diesel W461, with the slow selling and antiquated M102 gas engine becoming more and more of a Ladenhüter or store guardian, a nice German word for things that don't sell very well. Even with the added turbocharger, by the start of the new millennium, the now almost 20 year old design of the OM602 started lagging behind more modern diesel engines that embraced the new common rail direct injection technology. So in 2001, Mercedes afforded the W461 a new common rail 2.7 liter inline five turbo diesel engine labeled the OM612 that you could also find in C, E and S classes as well as Sprinter vans at the time. And it put out a very respectable 156 horsepowers, a maximum torque of 400 newton meters and gave the civilian W461 a new model name G 270 CDI, which stands for Common Rail Direct Injection Worker. And yes, that was the engine from now on, no more gasoline option. The 270 CDI also came with a new interior that while still utilitarian, now included creature comfort such as air conditioning, our service women and men get hot too. The electronics for these new systems were all moved into the cab to protect them from the environment and improve the weighting depth in 2007, the 2270, Jesus Christ, too many freaking numbers. In 2007, the 270 CDI worker became the 280 CDI worker with the introduction of the 3 liter V6 turbo diesel engine OM642 that still serves it today and is available in either Euro 5 or Euro 3 emission standard, the later one being able to cope much better with contaminated or substandard diesel quality. It was about this time that the German Bundeswehr adopted the name Greenliner for the W461s they procured derived from the standard NATO green color that they came in. Other than that, the Bundeswehr procured G's came standard with a dual circuit radio comm, gun mounts and camouflage lighting. Optional are the camouflage paint and a machine gun roof hatch. Where earlier Wolf models had often been soft top trucks, the Greenliner only comes in two body styles, a five door station wagon with a 2850 millimeter wheelbase and a super rad looking cap chassis with a tray bed with an even longer wheelbase of 3428 millimeters. The later having been, as far as we could find out, a special request by the Australian Army. The Aussies also had interest in a G with an increased payload capacity which led Mercedes to the development of a limited series of Greenliners with three axles and six by six drive. 
isn't that the coolest thing you've ever seen? Aside from Australia, as we mentioned before, Argentina and France, G-Wagons are serving in different kinds of combinations in quite a number of armed forces throughout the world, from Canada that sent their soldiers and armored Gs through Afghanistan, to Russia, where even the Prime Minister and President get driven around in armored G-55s, to the US Marine Corps, where it served as the interim fast attack vehicle. Now, as we've already seen with the Australians and their 6x6 G-Wagon, military use of the G-Wagon has sparked the development of some incredibly cool special purpose vehicles built on the G-Wagon platform, which we'll take a look at now. First, there is the Enoch, a light armored patrol vehicle in service with the German Bundeswehr, most notable with the Special Forces Kommando Spezialkräfte or KSK, uh, the German Federal Police, as well as the armed forces of Austria, Finland and Montenegro. It sports a NATO Stanek 4569 Level 2 certified armored monocoque that protects passengers against rifle fire, landmines and IEDs and it weighs in at 6.1 metric tons. Then there is the Serval, a light infantry vehicle named after an African big cat. Quick question, what is it with the German Bundeswehr in naming their vehicles after animals? I mean, the wolf, the dingo, the polecat, the fox, the lynx, and even the friggin' elephant. I mean, it must be like Noah's Ark on these cargo planes going to Afghanistan. Anyways, the Serval is made for special operations and more specifically for the German support of ISAF missions in Afghanistan, which just ended. The German KSK soldiers, special forces soldiers deployed there, quickly realized that their standard Green Liner just wasn't capable enough to get them out of sticky situations quickly. And embarrassingly, had to borrow Humvees from the US Army to see their missions through. Getting laughed at by their American colleagues, obviously, German military command tasked Daimler with vamping up the G-Wagon to meet the new missions criteria. And just a year later, they unveiled the Serval. It came with a lift kit, a snorkel, a winch, and long-range fuel tanks. It had all kinds of James Bond tricks up its sleeves whereby it could throw a series of grenades and set up a giant smoke screen to disappear into thin air. And if shit ever really hit the fan, came with a roof-mounted Browning M2 machine gun in caliber 12.7 millimeter and a 40 millimeter grenade launcher. Now earlier I said, that with a few exceptions, the W461 was never sold to the general public. That was briefly about to change in 2009. Mercedes market researchers had observed that engineers, farmers and folks in the forestry industry, who back in the 80s had bought the W460 purely for their capability, were increasingly trading in their now 20-year-old trucks to get a more modern Nissan Patrol, Toyota Land Cruiser or Mitsubishi Pajero, instead of buying the modern luxury G-Wagon we haven't discussed yet. So for the 30 year anniversary of the G, they decided to test the waters for a civilian variant of the W461, with what I personally think was one of the coolest limited editions for the G model ever. The G280 CDI Edition 30 Pure. A five door long wheelbase station wagon with permanent four wheel drive and optional off-road packages that added chucky off-road tires, you stupid bitch, you stupid slut. <laughs> chunky off-road tires, a winch, a roof rack, and headlight and turn signal guards. It came with a high-mounted rear license plate holder, flexible rear arch flaring, and a walk-on hood, but only up to 100 kilograms, so nothing for me. It had four single seats upholstered in hard varying fabric or vinyl, rubber floor coverings, spray protected water resistant controls, drainage apertures in the footwells, and a wood floor in the load compartment with load lashing rocks and rails. And while it did have modern safety features such as dual airbags and creature comfort such as air conditioning, the climate control remained manually operated as did the window winders and locks. Needless to say, despite a hefty price tag, it was an instant success. So Mercedes decided to put it into serial production as the G280 CDI Professional in 2009, to be replaced in 2010 by the G300 CDI Professional. Initially, the 280 CDI Professional 
was limited to a five-door long wheelbase station wagon designed before the body variants were expanded to five different body variations. A three-door long wheelbase panel van, a five-door long wheelbase station wagon, a two-door cabriolet and a two or four-door cab chassis truck for the G300 CDI Professional. Unfortunately, sales for the Professional did not follow the trend the Edition Pure had set and Mercedes cancelled production in 2014. The ones that were produced are now highly coveted in the Overland Ceramic community. The production of the Greenliner W461 continues to this day. So for those of you who are generals, presidents and warlords or war ladies, make sure to place your order now. Which brings us to the end of part 2 of the history of the Geländewagen covering the model series W461. Thank you guys so much for watching. Making this video was about five times more work than our usual stuff, so if you liked it, please make sure to hit that like button, it helps us out a lot. And while we've done a lot of research for this episode, information about the W461 is somewhat hard to come by, and we are sure that a lot has been left unsaid. Now we are totally prepared to make a 2.0 version of this video for Thor's second anniversary but then we can hopefully use it as the backdrop of these studio shots so please if you know any other facts details cool stories on the w460 and w461 own one of these trucks have additional pictures or video footage you want to share with us please go ahead and leave a comment down below we really appreciate that the same goes of course for any questions that you have in part three or three as the americans do we will take a big leap back in time to 1990 and that fork in the road of the history of the G-Wagon where we took a left a couple of minutes ago and are then going to take a right and explore how the G-Model went from taking the Shah, hunting rabbits in the Iranian desert to taking Kris Jenner, hunting her countless celebrity kids down Hollywood Boulevard.